then this is when Michael's like, you know what? I'm going to Google how to win court stuff right now. We're doing this. <laughs> this scene literally ends with his lawyer going, oh, I'm Googling it. If you <laughs> yeah. are ever talking, hey, free legal advice from a podcast. If you're ever talking to a lawyer and they go, I'm going to Google it, you are fucked. <laughs> Do you know that? You're fucked. Yep, it's true. It's true. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the Loki of podcasting, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? I'm so happy! <laughs> are you? <laughs> I am, yes. Oh, God. We we are burdened with glorious purpose with this one. <laughs> and we also have veteran maskist and Elon Musk's favorite scientist, <laughs> Kara San Maria. <laughs> Kara, is Doge headed to the moon? What's going on with that? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I heard yes. Yes, it is. So, Kara, what are we going to be breaking down today? Okay. So, we watched Prayer Never Fails. It's the story of a mouth-breathing basketball coach who loves Jesus, his gambling addict lawyer who also loves Jesus, mm -hmm. the lawyer's long-lost twin sister who owns an antique shop and may or may not be murdered by a bookie come to collect. Oh, an abusive judge. Yeah, not the judge of the attempted courtroom drama, just some other random no, judge. One, yep. uh, a different judge who owns three books. A lawyer who has actually <laughs> read case law and hates losing and is really good at negotiations. A principal who misallocates funds. You have to just mm -hmm. take our word for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a woman who is addicted to plastic surgery, who's dying of cancer, who let her 10-year-old son take a murder rap for what would clearly have been a self-defense case. Ah. Is that it? Am I missing anything? Was there any other plot in this movie? That is, I think, accurate. I didn't really watch it that closely, but I'm pretty sure all that either happens or they claim it happened. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That should just be the log line for the film. <laughs> all right. So this has been fun. Let's uh, wrap it up. Squid a wee on it, man. Ending music. <laughs> also, Jesus or something. All right, Eli. How bad was this movie? So fucking bad. Look. Yeah. Listen. Stop, drop, and roll. We watch bad movies on this podcast. I get it. Kevin Sorbo. He's a bad actor. Every single person involved with this movie is a non compass mentis level crazy person. And the fact that Heath and Kara had to watch it will keep me young for another 10,000 years. I am like Nosferatu. I am, I'm alive now. I don't like what your living is based on. <laughs> this. All right. That does track, though. All right. Is there anything y'all would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I mean, best, worst movie? I mean, I can just say that, right? It's just the best, worst movie. Oh, it's up there. Okay. It's up there. If I could part the curtain a little bit, podcast listener, one, so you can understand just how funny Kara is. Kara watches these movies 46 seconds before the record. <laughs> Heath and I, we lock ourselves in a soundproof dome. It takes Heath 12 hours and three <laughs> monasteries. I watch it over a couple of days. I watch Kara type her notes in as I'm writing the ads morning up. <laughs> and today I got to watch Kara slowly descend into madness and hatred. <laughs> she was muttering my name to the god of death in the last third of her notes. It's that bad, you guys. It's that bad. This is all true. You had YouTube going at like 12 times speed and somehow watching this movie. It's impressive. <laughs> wow. All right. I'm going to go with best worst montages. Yeah. Are those really? Yeah, I guess they were technically montages. <laughs> technically, yeah. Well, I think it's a, that's a good point. The movie doesn't really know what montage means, but they know of the word montage and they know it's a movie thing. So they try to do it a few times. But two of the montages, one of them is literally... Right at the beginning of the movie, a guy parks. Yep. <laughs> and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's a montage. They think that's a montage. And later in the movie, the same guy walks from his apartment to his driveway, gets in a vehicle, and that's a montage. <laughs> that's it. Yep. And they do music that makes no sense. Yeah. Oh, the music. Oh, mm -hmm. God. The music. No, they, they hit someone's iPod on shuffle, and that was the music for this film. <laughs> 
And I'm going to go with best worst reveal. Now, Kara teased this ever so slightly, <laughs> but truly, I, I have paused quite a few of our movies just to laugh. I have not paused a movie to laugh, gone upstairs to put my toddler to bed, have to interrupt lullabies and storybooks because I'm randomly laughing and he doesn't know why, <laughs> and then come back downstairs and still be laughing level of laughs. That's what I did when the reveal of this movie drops so arbitrarily. Is this the, by reveal, you mean the unsealing? Is I that what you mean yeah. the unsealing. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. God, <laughs> so good. Yeah, uh, the movie uh, sealed something and then they unseal it for us right there at the end in the uh, middle of the trial that they do. All right. I think we're going to take a quick break and uh, leave you on that unsealing cliffhanger and then we'll be back to talk about whatever this was seriously eli big booty liquors.com do you want to help me or not hey guys what you doing there well i'm helping eli cancel his old subscriptions oh that's nice of you yeah it would be except he used my credit card to sign up for like more than half of these mm-hmm they were free trials. Plus, Noah and Heath took my credit card away. So I had we no did take it away. There was a mango nectar incident. You know Bulk what we're talking about. Purchasing saves money, Heath. I'm not having this fight again. Oh, okay. This one is Wikipedia. Good for you. N- nope. Nope. Sorry. That's Wiki Feet. There it is. Hey, those guys work hard too. Don't cancel that one. Guys, if you want an easy and fast way to review your old subscriptions, why don't you just try Truebill? What's Truebill? Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, don't want, or simply forgot about. And it'll save me money? It sure will. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. So I wouldn't ever have had to log on to AOC's feet.com? That is correct, yes. She's an important lawmaker. Don't fall for subscription scams start canceling today at truebill.com slash awful movies go right now truebill.com slash awful movies it could save you thousands a year that's truebill.com slash awful movies thanks heath now if only there were an app to get these websites out of my memory no yeah i I get it we share an email um white noise actually helps oh thanks i'll try that Mm -hmm. she wears sandals a lot stop it okay don't okay I really feel like we should slide pieces of paper. I'm telling you, man, that's going to be weird. Hey, guys, you ready to record? Yes. Yes. Uh, Just real quick before we do. So you know by now that Noah has COVID this week. Yeah. How's he doing? He's better. He's better. But you can never be too sure about this kind of thing, which is why we wanted to ask if you might be interested in being the new Noah. Ta-da! Oh, wow. Like hosting the shows? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No. If anything happens to Noah, our brand will collapse in on itself like a poorly timed souffle. Just just real bad. Yeah. It's called a scathing atheist, not the scathing atheist and his two equally likable friends were very charming. <laughs> no, it's not. We're talking about you becoming Noah. Yeah. You got the long hair. You're the prettiest. What? Uh, is, would we say Noah's the, the prettiest? Oh, the, yeah. The, by the a group? long shot. Is for sure. I, okay. No, that's it. I just always thought I had, you know, like a certain porcelain beauty is what a my porcelain mom beauty. says. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm not going to assume Noah's identity. You said he's healing fine. I'm sure he appreciates all the nice messages and emails. This all seems a little bit, I don't know, premature. Okay. Uh, well, maybe, Kara, but you can never be too careful. Just one other thing. Last question. Do you accept payments in Hot Pockets? No. See, I know we should have slid pieces of paper. That's going to complicate things. And we're back. And we're going to start with a cold open on a black man getting violently arrested. <laughs> Good start to the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This will not be pertinent to the plot, by the way. I have a feeling that the movie makers were just like, get him. <laughs> okay. I think this is just, at first I was like, oh, this is real footage of their only black actor trying to arrive on the set. That's uh, that tracks. <laughs> We also get the credits here, and we got all the fucking hits here. We got Corbin Benson. We got Lorenzo Lamas. We got Eric Roberts. Yep. Yeah, I was 
so confused that you guys know who all those people are. <laughs> Come on. This is just, but this is your life. Yeah. LA Law, Corbin Burnson? No. Classic. Give it a few more years, Kara. You'll see Kay. Corbin Benson on the street and you'll be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. Yeah. 80s cocaine is a gateway drug to Christianity and Christianity <laughs> acting. We've learned that for sure. Okay. Well, that was a fun cold open. And now we're going to watch a guy do a weepy reading of the Bible. Okay. In the dark. I think it's important that we talk about the main character's physical appearance now. <laughs> Yes, because we're going to reference it a lot. Yeah, so I have him down as patchouli oil rep in most of my notes. He looks like every guy Kara has swiped left on in the last five years. <laughs> if a man could offer to teach you to surf an ocean of patchouli oil, it would be this man. If making your dick pic an NFT so that you can't send it to the cops were a human, it would be this human. <laughs> He looks like he traded his visitation rights for a hat, and everyone agrees it was a good idea. I agree with that, too. He definitely, it's weird because he's supposed to be like this super Christy, devout, just young person who just has dedicated his life to the Lord. But it's like he drew his inspiration from the basketball diaries. Yep. <laughs> like he was like, I really, really want to be Leonardo DiCaprio on heroin. Yep. And that's his whole thing. And he's always really sweaty. So sweaty. Every <laughs> shot, every take, no matter where he is, he's drained. The Rock Dwayne Johnson would hand this guy a towel and be like, hey, <laughs> you're a little moist on camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is also early on. This is where we discover that the people who made this movie don't know how to make movies. Mm -mm. So, so none of the scenes are color corrected. So you'll have like one shot and then the reverse shot will be like 10 shades darker. Mm-hmm. And they never white balance anything. And it's a mess. Yeah. It's like a home movie. I think I'm just blind to that now from, from watching all these movies. <laughs> it's I didn't, so bad. I didn't any of that. It's so bad in this movie. Yeah. So we see this guy doing the weird weepy Bible reading. We should also mention for a second there during the cold open, we see the, the black guy who got arrested in a jail cell. Oh, right. And this guy that we're looking at now says something to him through the door of that jail cell. This is going to come back and be very important, tying these characters back together. Not really, but yeah. <laughs> okay. it, it, it happens. We're also introduced to the idea that the black guy is an evil atheist because he's in the jail cell and he's like, I would like to mention the problem. We, you know what? Let's just all list our religions. I'm the atheist. What are you? <laughs> Christian? Cool. Done with cold open. And that's who we're meeting now. It turns out he's a basketball coach. He's arriving at school here. And it also turns out the black guy is not an atheist, but they lead you to believe that early on. Right. Yeah. He's an agnostic. And, no, he's uh, pretty no fucking teeter. Christian. He, he gets pretty Christian. But yeah, what what he actually is, is Christian. <laughs> yeah. But they're shooting for the atheist agnostic thing. They are. It's a, they they want to pull one over on you with confusions. They do that a lot in this movie. <laughs> they're like, there's a lot of backstory here that we're going to reference, but never actually give to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So heroin Leo DiCaprio arrives at school to be a basketball coach. He, he pulls into his dedicated spot in his Ducati motorcycle that he has mm -hmm. from being a high school basketball coach. And the music, it was doing like bucolic strings because we were watching the, the fun background of him driving. And then it goes to like techno rap, like aggressive beat techno rap here like mm -hmm. they're certain something important is happening but it's it's not i'm watching a guy just park and walk that's it <laughs> we should also point out that all the rap in this movie will be christian rap so if you actually uh. listen to the lyrics it'll be like yo the lord and my savior is jesus christ i'm very <laughs> clearly a white man in his mid 40s jesus <laughs> love him which is good because all of the characters are also very clearly yep. white men in their mid-40s. Yeah, that describes the high school kids we're about to meet, too. <laughs> yep, <laughs> as is this high school kids. And he does this great thing. So he's he's coaching them. One of his lines here is, you got to know when to take it hard to the hole. And I wrote in my notes, the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> but he does this thing at the end, which I think sports do, which is we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, no, we fight. No, that's not, that's not how... Sports do it, I don't think. <laughs> Except he does it as a Meisner exercise, right? Like from an acting class, he's like, we fight. And they're like, we fight. And he's like, we fight? <laughs> <laughs> he's not sure that they fight. He really means it. 
And then do you notice at the end of we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, they all go, oh, man, you know, just to make sure you know it's Christian. Yeah. But I have a thing. It's like a misophonia. Like it like hurts my brain when I hear Americans say amen instead of amen. Mm. Is that just me? <laughs> like it's like it's like Americans going, oh, just put it in that vase. Sure. Yeah, that bothers it's me. like it's a fucking vase. Don't say charade. You're being weird. Exactly. It's, just, just it's amen. Charade. Amen. It's your mozzarella, if you will. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> what was that? Heath's a mozzarella guy. Just so you know, Kara. Heath does oh, that. No. Absolutely not. That's what he does. Wait, say it. Say it, Heath. I would I, I would say Maz before I would say that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Mozzarella. Now I'm picturing you in Fast and the Furious hitting a button and mozzarella cheese propels your car forward. <laughs> Eli, the inside of your brain must be the weirdest place. Yeah. It's pretty dark in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's no wiki feet. <laughs> <laughs> when you first said misophonia, I thought you were going to say I, I'm like a sensitive to hearing Christian people say Christian things. <laughs> that too, that too. It's a condition too. It's yeah, a struggles mm-hmm. real us mm-hmm. too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they, it's this is a coach doing a little bit of Christian stuff with his public school basketball team. So yep, atheism is going to persecute the shit out of these characters. Cue the next scene. It's the next day at school. And Coach is, well, he's having trouble with the vending machine in the teacher's lounge, which I actually found fun. But yeah, he gets cornered by one of his players who wants to tell him that he's got some issues with his dad. And by the way, they picked the oldest looking high schooler. Yeah. They could possibly, like, he's really good at growing facial hair, this kid. (laughs) We don't talk about Bruno because he goes to this high school. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, it's such a non- story like like this kid's like my dad is violent he's a judge he's violent he beats me and he's like and then the coach is like oh something i'm referencing in my mind that i'm not going to let anybody be privy to and then we don't care about this until like the end of the movie for some reason nope just barely at the end they forget <laughs> about this whole plot and then yeah, they're it's like in a montage oh actually. yeah we, we should probably because then they do yeah they do <laughs> They do a non-montage at the end to (laughs) clear up this loose end. It's so dumb. They come back to this plot point like a husband who's forgotten an anniversary gets a gift, right? Just like, oh yeah, I always meant to get you grocery store flowers. Blade plug in. (laughs) Here you go. Nailed it. Yeah. So we we actually meet the dad here. They they cut away from the, the kid talking to the coach about his dad who's sick, and now we learn what that actually means. They're having a Father, son, chat, and this is Lorenzo Lamas. Fuck He's the yeah! Dad. Oh, this is like a person. Well, oh yeah, Lorenzo Lamas, a Christian movie actor. I know the name, <laughs> but I didn't recognize him. He's been in. I'm going to say five movies we've done so far. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so the dad has some very strange questions for his son. The first is how school. Mm-hmm. I wrote in my notes. Also, why are you forty? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> then he asks him if he's fucking anybody, guy or girl. He's one of those abusive woke judges you hear so much about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the kid replies like, you don't know anything about me. And they instantly start to like do the abusive dad hitting him bit. Yeah, the movie realizes he, he hasn't done anything evil yet. So they have him do like evil sips of whiskey here. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the kid explains, he's like, you... Your mom calls people crying all the time. So we're supposed to believe that, yes, he, he's abusive to the, the whole family, I guess. And I think we're also supposed to believe that dad is an atheist and he's woke. Yes. Like he is the boogeyman in this movie, except that they forget to write him in. Yeah, they do. The they do the lose track of him as well as several other characters. <laughs> yeah. So he finishes this story and then Bruno, the 45 year old high school student, he like lifts up his, his shirt. Kurt, by the way. Oh, we're calling him Bruno because of the face, the facial hair. Yeah, I'm calling him Bruno because he looks like Bruno from Encanto. Sure. <laughs> he lifts up his shirt and he's got this big bruise. And the coach is like, did he do that to you? And he's like, no, I tripped. But he just finished telling the story. So it was like, yes, yeah, so I went to my dad and we got in a big yelly fight. Here is a bruise. And he was like, oh, that's unrelated. Yep. Unrelated. Unrelated bruise. <laughs> but the response is terrifying here. This basketball coach is like, yeah, I, uh, I coach a sports ball thing, so I'm going to give you advice and not refer a professional about what I just heard here. 
True, and which he, is against the law because he's a mandated reporter. As, as I would a, hope so. I okay. mean, if he's a teacher at a, at a public school, oh, absolutely, he's a mandated reporter. Good. Yeah, but I feel like the Christian audience isn't sold on Don't Hit Your Kids, and so the movie's <laughs> right. edging its bets there. <laughs> yeah, really. Also, clearly, this kid is over 18, so yeah. like that, 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 that complicates yeah. things legally a little bit. To be fair, you just got in a fight with a guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right. Well, mandatory reporting is a violation of religious freedom. And that's kind of the theme of the movie here. Uh huh. The coach says he's like, OK, well, you know, beatings happen part of the Bible. But uh, here's what you do. You got to pray to check if this was a good beating or a bad one. I'll help you with praying. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening here. But Christian movie bingo. Kirk doesn't know how to pray. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we cut to the basketball coach teaching Kurt, how to you need to be taught how to wish for stuff, I guess. And then from there, we see him praying for a second. And then we cut to a meeting with Kurt, Kurt's dad, Lorenzo Lamas, the principal, and Coach Paul. His name's Aiden Paul. They're all at a meeting. Dad heard about the illegal praying. So there's a big complaint now. Okay, but I want to be this very, very clear. Dad opens with, if I find out you laid a hand on him... And coach's response, sweaty coach, patchouli coach, his response to did you molest my child is real quote, dude, are you serious right now? <laughs> OK, in fairness, though, the way this happened was crazy in terms of the, the order of the words. The dad is like, you're a pervert who laid hands on my son. And the coach is like, dude, what? And then he finishes this, the dad's like while praying is what I meant. Oh, yeah, it was really weird. I was like, what's happening? Dude, phrasing. Just, you know, get, get that a little bit better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you put your sacrament in my son's mouth and I <laughs> would like to. <laughs> okay, but that you, see, you heard how that was even better than your first thing, right? Because it was faster to get to the thing. I love, too, that the dad was like, I am I need to make sure everybody really knows that I'm an atheist here. And I'm like on team dad all the way during this scene because he's making really good points about how prayer in school is illegal. Yeah. But he does say at one point, God does not exist and no so-called coach is going to change that fact. Does he know what so-called means? No, like, no, just a fancy. Like he is the coach. Like that is your child's basketball coach. And no alleged brown haired man. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, he announces to the room that they have a school policy against Sprint. How would you even enforce that? Just like uh, uh, high fiving is like praying with either side of the hands. You can't stop doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a coach ends up wrestling around with Judge Dad, literally wrestling around with Judge Dad. And so principal fires him. He's like, uh, get on out of here now. Uh, get on out of here. <laughs> Okay, but the dad was about to start punching the son literally in this office and the coach kind of just like steps in because he's literally standing in between him and he's like, don't abuse a child right now. Stop being violent. And then the principal's like, you're fired. You're fired for being a Christian and trying to stop that. And that's the plot of the movie. Sure yeah, is. Really believable. So he sad motorcycle montages and guy who caught him praying Walks into the basketball room and he's like, hey, sorry, kids. Uh, coach isn't going to make it today. And these kids tear their shirts and weep like an Old Testament <laughs> widow. But they can't think of anything to say. So the entire scene is just the sound of individual lockers slamming over and <laughs> over and over. Yeah. They're all just doing locker room space work as best they can. Yeah. They're terrified <laughs> and they're not good at it. And they also have that like Napoleon Dynamite kind of vibe. Like when they're like, coach is fired. He's not coming back. So I'm going to have to coach you guys tonight. They're like, gaw. Yeah. <laughs> There's a real gaw vibe to this locker room. <laughs> and then at the end of the scene here, this is going to be very important. Lawyer guy, the one who we saw getting arrested earlier. He has a message on his phone that's like, hey, call me back. We, we, we need you to something from you. That will be revealed later. <laughs> you you were an atheist lawyer earlier, were you not? I don't know why I'm saying this on TV. Is this an answering machine? Do you have a, a physical answering? Do you not have a cell phone? What year is this? You're a lawyer. I want my money, though, is the important part. Yeah. This guy oh, is calling him yes. to collect some money. So 
evil atheist lawyer, typical atheist, owing money all over town. He has debts. But again, he's not an atheist. Like, to be clear, nothing <laughs> no. about this character is atheist. <laughs> In the description of the movie on, like, Dove and whatever, they describe him as an agnostic lawyer who teams up with a Christian basketball coach. Yeah. yeah. Which makes no sense because, I mean, we'll get there, but when the guy's like, I want a lawsuit, I want to, the guy's like, okay, yes, let's sue them about school prayer. I'm on board. Everything you're saying makes sense to me. I love Jesus. Like, this is how the conversation goes. Oh, but that's because he's an atheist sellout he's who's evil and willing to compromise his principles for money. No, there's, you're just adding layers that don't exist. In I'm this doing the movie. best I can. <laughs> <laughs> trying to help you guys make your movie oh my god oh my god I'm so excited about the next scene yeah alright l- l- I guess we're gonna just keep talking about each scene we're gonna go to the next one <laughs> so the next day evil atheist lawyer is hanging out with we don't know yet this is his twin sister but it seems to be a lady friend and they're no that seems like they're straight up boning it's yeah. weird yeah it does they're like being <laughs> very weird. flirty it turns out <laughs> I, I didn't realize at the time it makes it actually even more problematic. They're very flirty. They turn out to be brother and sister, but they're talking about literally weather and church. It was so long. I hated so much of this. Oh, I love this scene. It's amazing because the way that they introduce that they're twins is so fucking roundabout. She goes, when was the last time we had weather like this? I know. We're twins. It was when I found out that you were my twin. She doesn't even say that. She goes, it's when I found out I have a twin. And then we had to wait for him to like yeah, later be like, here. I am your twin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I think my favorite, though, of this whole scene is when there's like a whole weird thing about money. And basically... She's like, how you doing, twin brother? You okay? You need any money? And he's like, I actually do. And she's like, I'm not giving you any fucking money. Like, she gets really mad at him for asking for money, even though she set him up to, like, spike that down. Yeah, she says, do you need money? And he's like, I could use a loan. And she says, I don't put icing on my cornbread, which, by the way, is my new catchphrase. That is fantastic. I'm absolutely saying that, too. Can anybody explain how that translates to... I will not give you money. It means you only come inside. What? What? <laughs> That's what it means now when I use it. <laughs> That's, oh my God. What you're, you okay, you're going to, this is going to be a sexual saying for you. Heath and I just like lost our <laughs> breath for, <laughs> we were both like, wait, what? <laughs> I think that's important. You're talking with someone, right? You're doing like will, won't, want lists. And you're like, just so you know, I don't put icing, I don't on, put my icing on cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> but all that being said, how does I don't put icing on cornbread literally translate to I will not give you money? I'm very confused. Oh, I think she's saying that like, I'm giving you cornbread already. I'm not icing it too. Oh, like I already gave you so much money. Yeah. Oh. I'm not. Uh, coming inside you, Eli? What What were you saying? What? <laughs> you just made that up right now, Heath. Just move on. Just, does this not? Does this whole movie not feel like an SNL sketch where, like, the movie is really dramatic and in in no way matches the tone of the scene itself? Yeah, yeah. Like, they- like an Andy Samberg, like one of those like funny <laughs> sketches where it's like really intense, but actually nothing's happening. Yeah, it, it's it is as though the music of the movie is hoping they'll take it serious. Yes. Yes, so they just keep turning it up. Like the actors aren't selling it enough, so they just turn the music up a little louder, hoping right. something will come yeah. out of them. They try to add some stakes here too with the the loan she took out. So he's handling some kind of case for her that we never learn about. <laughs> I know until the very end. So for a while, it's just the random case that he's doing for his his lady friend. Wait, we learn about it at the end. Yeah, yeah. For it doesn't help with anything, but yes, they they tie it off. <laughs> I don't remember that. So he's handling a case for her and she says, I took out a loan against my house to pay for this lawsuit that I'm paying you for. And she also says, the bank is going to take my house back if I don't pay them $10,400. And she wrote that down on a piece of paper, the number (laughs) $10,400, I guess, Mm -hmm. and hands it to him. And he's like, oh, you you handed me the paper. You wrote that down. Okay. Okay. Got it. Stakes of movie colon $10,400. Okay, cool. Cool. Except not. Like, that's the thing. Like, they they spell it out so explicitly. And then, is that the stakes of the movie? Like, no, no. Does, that plot line gets so lost. No, the stakes are moving around like some kind of cartoon mole <laughs> art <laughs> in this movie. But they will be the stakes for the next, I would say, six or seven seconds. And that's important. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 
And of course they end with, in Jesus's name, I believe you will win this case for me. And they move on. Mm -hmm. So we cut back to the fired coach here. And he's been, uh, I guess he's been doing the weepy motorcycle montage for like 36 hours now. Yeah, just <laughs> like, like in the, the background. next night. Yeah. <laughs> and he's finally uh, at a gas. He's pulling up next to a gas station and he sees, <laughs> this is so stupid. He sees on like a telephone pole or like a transformer box or something on the side of this gas station, a sign, a, a little poster for a lawyer. Oh, he's is like, that what? I must have blinked. Like, I think I blinked when they showed that scene for half a second, because when I opened my eyes, all I saw was this really weird scene where he's like, it's a really tight shot of his face. He's in his motorcycle helmet and his eyes are just darting around, but they're on him for like 19 seconds. Yeah. Just looking around in weird. And I'm like, I have no idea what's happening in this scene. He's scanning for really good lawyers and finds one. <laughs> yeah. He finds okay. one on a little poster with like tear off pieces of paper with the little frayed bottom part. Yeah. That's how you <laughs> get the best lawyers. Best lawyer in town on a telephone pole. So <laughs> he's going to eventually meet this lawyer and team up. So now we cut over to a diner. Where Okay, so let me clarify something for the listening audience to make so they don't have to go through the pain we went through. <laughs> the lawyer is $100,000 in debt to a bookie, right? So in order to try to win that money back, he is now asking the waitress at this diner to place bets for him. But to be fair, we don't know that yet. We do, do we? not know that, and it <laughs> yeah. is not made clear by this scene. As far <laughs> yeah. as what we can tell, a guy walks over, asks him for basketball predictions, he gives them, and then the waitress comes over and he asks her for basketball <laughs> predictions. And then the actual only person in the diner who knows anything about basketball, the coach, gives him like a really intense rundown of why all his predictions are wrong. <laughs> but the lawyer doesn't do anything about it. He's like, oh, okay. That sounds like you know what you're talking about. I will ignore everything you just said. <laughs> yep. His bets went in too late. I thought I thought this was kind of natural, though. I mean, I've worked in a bunch of restaurants where there's there's usually some kind of low level bookie in some <laughs> back of the house position, and then there's front of the house people running bets back and forth. Sometimes this is just like totally. Na it's a there's drugs, there's pot happening, and there's this. And I like Heath that you said this is weird. What is happening? Because I don't know if you can see in my notes, I wrote what is happening probably <laughs> five hundred times. Yeah. If you find uh, for on Kara's notes, it's just all what is happening. <laughs> So they wrap up that ridiculous diner scene. And now Coach Paul is meeting with his assistant coach, Ray, who is the guy who saw him doing that prayer earlier in the movie. OK, this scene is so fucking amazing because Ray Ray's one of those fat guys. I don't know if you've seen this podcast listener. It's one of my favorite phenomenons. If you are bald and fat at a certain point, the back of your head gets a tummy. Right. The back of your head gets a tummy. Yeah, oh, you're, right, you're right. Yeah. You get you get a second, you get the thing on the, the back part. Yep. Yeah. You know how pugs look like sandwich bread? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Sandwich it's bread. that is he is the human version of a very wrinkly pug. Wait, but who are we talking about? Who's Pug Man? Assistant coach. Oh yeah, for sure he is. Who caught him praying? He's like, Hey man, uh it was me, I turned you in, but uh I wanted you to have this to make up for it. And I was like, oh, he's like giving him a check. Nope. It is another school that is hiring. It's so weird, too. It's like in an envelope. Like he wrote down on a piece of paper or something like this school is hiring. Maybe try and get a job there. Yeah, right. It's so weird on an envelope. Right. I think the idea is that this assistant coach like narked him out to get the sweet gig as head coach of the high school basketball team. Yeah, so but nobody cares. Buy a Ducati for himself. I don't know. It's weird. And from here, we also get a crosscut thing with the coach and also the atheist lawyer. They're both having sad alone time later that night. Okay. Oh, my God. I want to talk about this montage because <laughs> this montage exists so that we could give patchouli oil seven chances to try to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He manages squinting his face up real hard. Real hard. Like he squeezes his eyes as hard as he can, yep. thinking that's what on-screen crying is. <laughs> he might as well mouth... Cry, 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 cry. All right. So suddenly there's a knock on the door and it's his entire basketball team. They're here to see him. Oh, and he's sweating so hard. Yeah, I wrote my notes. Hey, coach, were you trying to cry so hard? You're now super sweaty. 
<laughs> have you guys noticed at this point, because I've probably written it at least 10 times, but I haven't brought it up yet, that his mouth breathing, he's just like slack jawed yeah. in every scene because he has no expression on his face. And in every scene, he's just going. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. He's got he's got the wake apnea for sure. <laughs> it's really, really making me uncomfortable. Now, the knowledge that this actor died six months after this movie was made does make a lot of that make sense, except he died in a car crash. So then it comes right back. Yeah, you, again. Just, you just really floored everybody because we had not given that away yet. Oh, it's important. Yeah, that's a me. real thing that happened. Yeah, it's also not a plot point. Like he actually sadly died. And not not six months after the movie came out, I think before the movie was released. Oh, was that six they, months after filming? Yeah. Yeah, because they dedicated the movie to him in the movie. And can I say something weird? Because huh. I almost pointed this out in the scene with the sister. The sister's subplot is that her son died in a three car crash and she was suing to try and get some kind of compensation. Wait, what? Yes. They told us that? Yes. I think, do you think they put that in to mirror reality? No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's so weird. No, he died after filming. There's no way they were like, you know what a great tribute to him would be is if we put that <laughs> his, his tragic death. I feel like that, that is what they would do. It's possible. <laughs> but yeah, then he died in a three car crash. That's weird. Classic. His prayer never fails. Got him. Anyways, the prayer kids, never fails. the kids are there. They want him to do a lawsuit. But he's not gonna because lawsuits are for liberal cucks. Yes, that's the scene, basically. And then camera guy is just like really struggling to pull focus because there's like 17 children in a one bedroom apartment at this point. And he's like, I have no idea <laughs> who should be in focus and who shouldn't. Yeah. So they, they finally all leave his house after a, a lot of trouble, apparently, in the filming process. And then he uh, lays back down on his couch to have some more weeping time. <laughs> He's really trying. He aims. He goes for shaking this time. He's pretty sure shaking is crying. Like, don't give an actor a really long crying scene if he doesn't know how to cry on camera. No, they, it's weird. <laughs> they're not. They do the opposite. They lean <laughs> all the way into this. They're like, he's going to be good at this crying eventually. It's like a five minute crying moment here. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. We listen to a whole song. And then he like he like takes a picture out of his wallet of Dolly Parton for some reason. OK, thank you. What? Thank you. Okay. Very clearly the photo that comes in the frame. It's really weird. It looked like he cut out a woman from like a 70s porn magazine mm -hmm. and was using it as a bookmark in his Bible because he's oh. weeping and reading the Bible here. Mm -hmm. Like you do. And then we see like Farrah Fawcett or Dolly Parton or whatever pop out in this weird cut out picture. Yeah. But, but keep that photo in your mind because it's going to pay off in the best possible way. <laughs> Except not at all, but yes, it does no. come back around. It's not correct, but it does come back around, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. And can we just, real quick, I just need to take a quick second to talk about how, like, Eli. Yeah. I need to know something from you. Sure, absolutely. Is it that you're not good at spelling? Is it that you type yes. too fast? Is it that yep, because it's both? You can't think that you spell the word hurt, H E U R T. That's how I spelled it in our notes. So, or hededek, hededek, or inspiration. Nailed it. <laughs> okay, just check God it. God damn it! It's just that he types really fast. That must be most of it, right? Tim, if you need to, you can screenshot these notes. I won't spell correct them. You can <laughs> provide them to the listening audience. Inspiration. <laughs> He's got very clearly a photo that comes in a frame for inspiration. I do. <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's real. So. In the movie, this guy's going to sue the school. In real life, by the way, if this was somebody who... We actually, this is really happening. In real life, this guy's Stop on Stop bringing up Carlson. the real world, Heath. People are trying to enjoy he's our movie on, He's podcast. on Tucker the next day <laughs> in real life if this happens. Liberty Council, Matt Stavers representing him pro bono. <clears throat> I hate real life. Okay, we're going to take another quick break. And then we'll be back with more Prayer Never Fails. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Hi, I'm Heath Enright. I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Kara Santa Maria. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. For example, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy, but that just isn't true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. Or some people think that therapy is secretly a plot by the Illuminati to steal the water in your body. But actually, no, that's just the no, Jewish therapist. Nope. Not not that. Okay. But many people think therapies for so-called crazy people. 
But therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions. Except for Italians. No. What? Eli, shh. Italians have emotions, too. We all have emotions. And we've been taught that mental health shouldn't be a part of normal life, but that's wrong. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor, and nutrition. We should also be focusing on our minds just as much. That's true. I've talked about managing my depression before, and therapy is a huge part of that. But okay, smart doctor fancy brain, what does all this have to do with better help? Well, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than traditional in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Just give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Plus, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. Better help. Help with your emotions, especially if you're Italian. Nope, don't. Okay. Does better help actually like these ads? Not this one. Okay, everyone. Welcome back to the first day of school. Uh, just quick reminder. We have a school policy against prayer here at Buckaloo High. As many of you know, we had an incident with the basketball coach last year. So, uh, just want to, does anyone have any questions about the uh, no I do. prank? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, is that just praying out loud or can I pray like silently in my head? Yeah. Okay? How would we know that? That's a great question. Mm -hmm, I mean, right. unfortunately, we can't read your thoughts, but if teachers notice you looking, you know, pray, you can expect some kind of disciplinary action. So if you're doing something that might, be confused for prayer, hmm. like holding in a poop or something. Just consider saying that out loud. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, I am holding in a poop right now. Great. So. Just like that. Oh, other question. Yes. Uh, yeah. What about wishing? Oh, that's a great one. Wishing is okay. Out loud or to yourself. Just don't make that wish to a deity. That's a little too close to prayer. Okay. What about like a demigod, like Hercules? Demigods hmm. are fine as long as they never ascend. So, you know, I'd avoid any forms of Shiva. Got it, got it. Okay. Well, that's out of the way. Lunch today is pizza. I'll see y'all at the bell. Still trying not to poop. Good boy. <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, Coach Paul was looking at the Bible and a porn star bookmark or something like that. And that reminded him about the business card from the degenerate gambling lawyer from the telephone pole. So now he's meeting up with Michael Brown, ESQ. And he opens this scene by explaining that it's no coincidence that he saw his poster and then ran into him because there are there are 27 books in the Bible. <laughs> and that's divisible by three. It's tri It's supposed to be a trinity. He tries to explain it as like, well, I found your poster on the side of the telephone pole. And then I met you at a diner, too. You, you gave me a business card at that moment. And then I now recently, more recently, found it. Three and a half. Three, though, Jesus, Trinity. <laughs> That's really his explanation. And 27, 66 right. times. Well, that's the best part is he says there's 27 books in the Bible. And the lawyer's like, there's 66 books in the Bible. And he's like, right, but three is also... The New Testament, though, is it's three cubed. Three times 22 is 66. <laughs> And this is the first time you realize this lawyer is not an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where the movie is going to get confused about its own title. Right. He's he's like, do you ever pray? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, did it come true? And he's like, no, it didn't. And he's like, well, what did you pray for? And he's like, oh, I dreamed that my wife wouldn't cheat on me. And he's like, did she? And he's like, well, no, I, I cheated on her. And he's like, see, God nailed it. <laughs> this movie is called Prayer Never Fails. <laughs> it's bad. It's weird. They're sitting there and he's like, this is what happened at school. I need to sue them. And the guy's like, my wife cheated on me. And you're yep. like, why is that relevant to this conversation? <laughs> Sorry, you asked me if I'd ever prayed before. So I thought the only thing I could do is talk to you about my wife's infidelity. Do you want to watch the video? <laughs> <laughs> and then the coach is like, I just, it's the only thing I know. I just want to help boys become men. And I was yeah. like, I'm so uncomfortable. I want you to say coaching basketball at the beginning of all your sentences. <laughs> no, how about you do that? You say that first. I just think it's ironic that like he says it and he's the hero of the movie. I say it and all of a sudden I'm not allowed on school grounds anymore. You know? So, yeah. well, 
He's not allowed on school grounds either at this point. <laughs> to be fair. Because he's a Christian. And <laughs> it's a very, very atheist school in Florida that, that fired him here. Yeah. This is where the lawyer lets him know that he needs a retainer. Keep in mind that the sister needs $10,400 to save her house. And she's like, okay, how much retainer do you need? And he's like, $10,500. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. I love that he adds a markup. <laughs> yeah. Because he's going to take that extra hundred and put it on like green on roulette or something. Yeah. Yep. That's the plan. But then coach is like, okay, what about 5,000 for that retainer? And Michael Brown, the lawyer, is like, yeah, okay, we'll do 5,000. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> so, also, I don't get, like, where was he, like, he looked around the room first and goes, what about 5,000? Was he, w- this had something to do with his motorcycle? Yeah, so what we're supposed to get from this scene, I'm so glad you asked, Kara, because <laughs> yeah. I really didn't get this either. I had to go back. Th- yeah, this is related to minute. his motorcycle? Yeah. I think so. What happens is he sells his motorcycle for the $5,000. Right, but we don't actually see see him do that we no. just see him now riding in a car we just see a sign that says for sale by owner not motorcycle for sale by owner just for sale by owner <laughs> and then he's driving in a car and we're supposed to put together that he sold his motorcycle it's so oh this okay. movie's so bad yeah exactly okay <laughs> so he he owned a motorcycle and a car he sold the motorcycle for five thousand dollars yeah isn't a ducati worth more than five thousand? I, I would have assumed yes i think it's a very expensive motorcycle. <laughs> i think so too but the movie is actually about to get more confusing because while we're watching coach patchouli oil sell his motorcycle we watch the lawyer and i noticed that both of you and heath are confused in your notes about this the lawyer is being confronted by the waitress from the diner about the bet she put up for him. Are you sure that's who this is? One hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is just a random character and the movie forgot they didn't introduce her yet. And they're just like, you know, Mary, right? And here she is. Nope. And she's talking to him. Wait, is this where I wrote again? What is happening? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. You wrote what is happening? And I should have called in sick or something. <laughs> Eli, when you texted me how excited you were about this one, I should have listened and oh. called in sick or something. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He texted me several days ago, like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Why? What was exciting about this? Because he it's loves so this bad. movie. I yeah. love They're all bad. I think about when I'm watching these movies, I think about you guys watching these movies and it gives me strength. <laughs> I don't like how that sustains. It seems it's like, how like your pray. lifeblood. Yeah. You keep describing it that way. Bad movie never fails. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, whatever. This character, apparently this is the waitress. I guess this kind of makes sense because she's kind of connected to the bookie and this is about the bookie who left a message in Michael's office about all the money he owes, right? Yeah. So that's the connection? Yeah. So but so you hear that. She says, they left you a message at your office. And you hear that and you're like, oh. So they like trashed his office to to make a point. But they literally <laughs> they nope. literally left him a piece of paper that just says, check your email. <laughs> oh mm-hmm. yeah, what is this? <laughs> and then the email is a two part threat. They could the bookie <laughs> The bookie. It's so complicated. And let's be real, the authors of this movie couldn't think of a one part threat. No. They have footage of his <laughs> twin sister sleeping and they just attached a random article about someone being dead. So they were like, this is your sister sleeping and this is a, this is a guy who died. So <laughs> I think you get what we're implying here. <laughs> I really wanted Michael to call him and be like, wait, so did you kill that guy? No, no. This is just, I was just looking for death. You should have got a back and forth of them emailing each other, like a <laughs> montage of those emails getting typed. No. Well, they did do this weird montage where they're like, here's the video. Here's the headline. But it's a screenshot of his laptop or his computer looking at the news (laughs) article headline. And then they go back, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. forth." (laughs) And then they do it really, really fast. But every time it's there's this weird thing that like when they're looking at the news article of the random guy getting murdered, there's like a load bar. There's something is moving. Yeah. <laughs> and so when they clip back and forth, it's clearly they only have the one shot. Like they didn't bother mm-hmm. to film it statically. <laughs> and so it's like really like I'm going to have a seizure. Yeah. Oh, it's the weirdest scene. You have reached your three free articles. You have to call back. <laughs> I, I, this is behind a paywall now. What were you trying to send me? <laughs> oh, damn it. I find another news article of someone dying. Will you share your Washington Post with me? <laughs> 
You could share it with one person, I think. <laughs> so the point is, though, that this email with like vague murder evidence from an article and also a spy cam. It was a spy cam, right? Yeah. Of his sister. Yep. Yeah, that was weird. So this bookie has installed a camera yeah. at his sister's house. Just for this threat? Yep. It seems like a lot of work when all they did was just find a random article about somebody who got murdered for the other half of the thing. Yeah. One it's like person, very not balanced. I, right. I feel like the bad guy sent two team members of his gang. <laughs> yes. Like a yeah. super overachiever and a super underachiever. Right? Like like his head henchman was like, don't worry, I put a spy cam in her bedroom. And then his son his was like, nephew, don't yeah. worry, dad. I uh, got an article where a guy died. God. <laughs> Yeah. It's behind a paywall, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Email him that. <laughs> Call. <laughs> right. So Michael sees all this and he goes to see his twin sister because now he's scared. And he's trying to be subtle about this evil bookie who apparently has a spy cam in her bedroom. And he's like, let's go uh, let's go on a vacation. Just uh, you and me. Hey. For no reason. You know what would be fun? Right now. Have you ever just like randomly gone into hiding? That'd be a fun adventure. <laughs> right. Right. I also. Look, I don't like to judge other people's physical appearance, except for all the times you've heard me do that <laughs> yeah, on like, this what? podcast. Who? Do you not? <laughs> yes, you do. And, and also generally, and, and yes, I do. <laughs> this actress appears to have gotten plastic surgery between the first scene and the second scene. I might buy that, actually. Yeah. It may have happened. Yeah. The twin sister? Yeah. yeah, the twin sister. Definitely someone stretched a lot of skin and stapled it behind her ears in between these ticks. Could be that she saw the the dailies. Yeah. <laughs> was not happy. With she that. saw the dailies and like she was like, all right, girl, give me the person who has the Botox. And then she just went and got, <laughs> yeah. got it done while they were watching the dailies. Just came back. <laughs> Hello. Yes. I'm yes. ready for scene two. But can we can we just take a minute to talk about how weird it is to ask your sister to just get out of town with you for a bit? Yeah. Just take some time. That seems strange. Especially since Heath was still unaware that they were twins at this point in his notes. <laughs> oh, yeah, he goes, oh, they're twin brothers. <laughs> he's talking to her like she's his lover. Like, right? he's literally, let's just go somewhere. Let's just, you know, reset. And she's like, what What are you talking about? I have a, I have a job. Oh, 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 and my favorite. We have the same DNA, she says to him. This is this, the this is, best line in the movie. That's how they reveal it. No, you don't. That's not what fraternal twins are. Wait, they don't have the same DNA? <laughs> no, the exact same DNA. She says, look me in the eye and tell me this is going to be settled. And he's like, um, um. And she goes, exact quote. She goes, we have exactly the same DNA. <laughs> But I actually think a lot of people don't, sadly, don't know this. But how could you possibly make the claim that you have the same DNA if you're a different sex, a different biological sex? Not just the same DNA. We have exactly the same like, DNA. Like they have a whole different chromosome. Mm. One of them is XX and the other is XY. Citation needed. This doesn't track. Yeah, I wrote, <laughs> I I wrote my notes at this point. You're not that kind of twins or... You've had some major work done, and I'm not just talking about the facelift. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. this is this is where she reveals that she knew her case about her son who died in a car crash had been dismissed all along. And he's like, well, if you knew, why have we had two scenes where you asked me about the case? And she was like, I wanted to see testing you if you would be honest with me. Oh, see, now I get it. Because I put car accident reference. What? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then I said, they reference a lot of things we are not privy to. Who wrote this movie? In all caps. Great question. Great Excellent question. question. Thank you. The car Thank accident you. is the case that he's handling for his identically DNA'd sister. <laughs> yes. Now I, now I don't understand. And her kid died in that car accident. Yeah. And somehow she's suing, but we don't know who. But it's over. But it's over because the case was dismissed and she has that written on another piece of paper that's been folded a lot. Right. And But she held that back from her brother, who apparently either didn't know about he's it or lawyer. didn't. How, how would he not she? know that the case was dismissed? Or I think that he did know and he's a liar, liar, pants on fire and was hoping to suck more money out of his sister to help finance his gambling debts. For gambling. Oh. Right. Yeah. I there think that's go. the point of this is that he's actually kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. Seems like <laughs> like this the same DNA. Yeah. This is like actually a pretty immoral character. He's sort of a bad guy. Yeah. So he 
he walks to the car and he go, has this weird monologue. Point is, he's going to pay her back. He's promising to become a better person and help help pay back his sister eventually. Now it's the next morning, and we're with the principal, and he's doing the pledge on the PA for the whole school, and he skips the phrase under God because it's an atheist school in Florida. One of those famous atheist schools in Florida. <laughs> oh, is this supposed to be Florida? I think it's in Florida. I know it was filmed in Florida, and I, I and everybody's got Southern accents, so it's somewhere in the American South, I feel like. But either way, bad lawyer guy walks in, and he's like, under God, that was added in 1954 to get the Russians, which, just as a side note, is a point for our side, not for the religious side. Wait, did he actually say that? Yeah. Oh. He doesn't say the thing about getting the Russians, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael Brown ESQ is like, we actually... Put under God in there in 1954. You should say it. It's important. This is serious. America. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then he does the fucking swivel turn. My favorite part of the movie. He turns around. And he's like, oh, one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> You've been served. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. So I guess you sue the principal in this case. That is that that would be the, the defendant in a civil sure. case like this. Yeah. Okay. So they're suing the school. Really, via the principal. Okay, that's what they're saying. I took on this case. It's not an extra case. Right. So from there, okay, we uh, cut ahead to Michael at a meeting with the judge. That would be Eric Roberts and the lawyer for the school. So it's like a pre-trial judge-lawyer meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they argue back and forth about, oh, we want six months. No, 30 days. No, 60 days. And Judge Eric Roberts, by the way, Eric Roberts, I'm going to go ahead and say this, literally drunk on camera. Oh, for right? sure. He's like, I, I'll tell you guys what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I love you guys. I love you. <laughs> so we're going to do. You're so right, Eli. Because look, I wrote, wait, I know that actor. He seems weird. Yeah. <laughs> he's that guy. He's weird. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, always drunk guy with lead leather. He's made of leather. No, but the thing is, he usually seems normal, but he seemed weird in this. Yeah. He's drunk. I think he's drunk. I think yeah. you're right. He's fucking wasted. He's like, <laughs> I said I'd do another movie. So here we go. It's me, Judge Man. Click clack. Is he normally sober, though, in his other stuff? I feel like no. I think so. No, I feel like this is just after he agreed to do another Ken Del Vecchio film. And he was like, you know what? <laughs> I deserve those little jello shots, those dusty jello shots at the liquor store. I'd like a whole fishbowl of them, please. Can get me out of the hate crime I did in New Jersey. <laughs> Wait, do they? Oh, yikes. Do they usually? Is he in a lot of these like Christy movies? A bunch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I he literally. in a bunch. I only know know him from like mainstream stuff mm -hmm. no corbin bernson too, these are all all stars we've done a bunch of these guys right, I thought, but all like, these other people are like who are they this is the only guy i was like i know that guy i thought for sure cliff from cheers was showing up yeah john ratzenberger <laughs> oh, we don't yeah. get him we, we had we had a lot of regulars on here okay but this this is the best part of the scene it's the only reason it's worth bringing up the scene as they're leaving right bad lawyer michael brown notices the judge's bookshelf. Well, except, except <laughs> shelf. They, would we say shelf? Right. They couldn't get a room with a bookshelf to, <laughs> do it, to shoot in. <laughs> so he's got two bookends, bookending the, the, four the, books. <laughs> yeah, like it's no books. He has no books. The feet of the bookends were like pushed up against each other and like slid past each other a little bit. <laughs> the, like yeah. the four books that they yeah. could find as props. So now it is Corbin Burson time. Yes, it is. So we're at the offices of a very fancy atheist friendly law firm. And they're going to be helping out the school. They're like the most famous law firm and they're uh, atheist friendly. And Corbin Burson is their all-star lawyer. He has not lost a case in 20 <laughs> years. I know this is a trope, not just for Christian movies, but it's such a weird trope. If a lawyer was like, just so you know, I haven't lost a case in 20 years, I'd be like, oh, so you only... Did you have any hard ones? Or? You only yeah. take on the cases you can win? <laughs> do you not do a lot of cases? My favorite is that they, they've not panned out yet when he reads this line. And, and I say reads this line because nobody in this movie actually acts. <laughs> yeah. He says, 200 years of collective experience here. He shows only three people, two of whom are under 40 years old. 
Oh, the math on that is rough. I'm really yeah. confused by this math. Later, they pan out and there's five people, but I'm sure the the woman on the far side is 19. Yeah. So it's I'm still really confused how they arrived at that math. I wanted to cut down the table to Methuselah, who's their paralegal. <laughs> hey, how's it going, everybody? That's mostly me. He's talking about mostly <laughs> me. Mostly me. I, oh, God, I wish Hi, they Corbin did that. Benson. No, I just take notes. I'm very old. <laughs> So yeah, he does the like, I am going to destroy the very essence of him. And that's that's the scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wrote, wait, who are they talking about? What is going on? <laughs> it's such a crazy mo. It's like this evil atheism speech. Like, we're not just going to scorch the earth. He actually says that. Yeah. We're not just going to scorch the earth. We're going <laughs> to like do a full Christian genocide. That's the message of this moment. Also, Corbin Burnson is psyched about doing a, a lawyer thing again because, yeah, yeah, L.A. law. He's like saying all the law words that he remembered. Uh, He's in his element. Yeah. yeah. You remember when people liked me? Huh? I could do law stuff. Her curium jure is another Latin thing that I know, <laughs> just so everybody knows. Eric Roberts let me have a little of his water bottle, so I'm pretty psyched for this scene. <laughs> so, so over there, we got ahead to later that night, and Michael Brown, the lawyer... He's going to find Coach Paul to talk about their case. And uh, Coach Paul's not home because he's sleeping in his truck because he got evicted, maybe? Is that what happened? Oh, they don't say he got evicted. That's why I wrote, why is he sleeping in his car if he has an apartment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't this just happen? Like, could he got evicted in like two weeks somehow? Like days. I think they were still in the days range. Yeah, it's very unclear. This this scene, though, coming up is the scene where it really sort of codified for me, like really cemented the fact that this is a high school project, this movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. The quote, news reporter. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, this my is, God. I can't. I this can't. This is my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay. So, <laughs> so from so there, good. from, from the, the parking lot where we see that the coach is in his truck, <laughs> we cut to the coach, I guess, the next day. And he's at, we find out, a job interview. Yeah. But we don't know that right away. What we really cut to is CNN. Well, in the in the movie, it's like MCN. But it's, it's clearly CNN doing a segment with a, an adult reading a middle school report about the First Amendment. That's what's happening. But it's supposed to be like the angry atheist CNN reporter being like, the First Amendment, separation church and state. That's real. But it's barely an adult, and it literally reads like one of those episodes of South Park. Yep. <laughs> where they're like it's doing like a little school report. Um, it's so embarrassing to watch. You're like, oh, God, they think this actually looks like what the news is. It's so stupid. But the best part is from there, we're seeing that, the news thing, but then they, they zoom out. And we're actually at the interview. So the person who's interviewing him for a job at a school has shown him this video she spun her screen around and showed it just to taunt him to be like look cnn is saying how wrong you are there's no way we're hiring you i just brought you in to taunt you like this yeah she says i like your resume and i was like his resume is coached basketball at a school yeah oh and this is this is definitely where you again realize that they really stick to the like say it show it say it mantra <laughs> because she says I like your resume and the camera pans to his resume <laughs> mm -hmm. and then back over. It's made of paper. There it is. Oh, yeah. So stupid. But but she won't hire him. So now he has to shamefully apply for unemployment. This might have been my favorite moment in the movie. This is pretty funny, too. Oh, this everything about this is so unreal. Where he accidentally threatens to sexually assault the woman at the unemployment office yeah he really needs to work on the phrasing he's got to say the, the the important thing right at the beginning right so this is a christian movie so he has to clarify he would never file for unemployment <laughs> who would do that except for you know unemployed people which he's not he's just temporarily jobless so he's like yeah i've never done this before i'm sorry and she's like well you need to fill out these forms and come back and he goes i'm not trying to violate anything and then the actor breaks <laughs> <laughs> but what we get from the movie is I'm not trying to violate anything. <laughs> Everything about this scene was weird to me. What was he talking about? Terrifying. He's not violating her? Well, he want so she told him to fill out these forms and then like get in a different line or go back to the end of the line or something. 
and he wanted to to point out that he's been online for three hours. I'm not trying to like break the rules, but can't you just let me like sign the thing and then you stamp me right now? And <laughs> so she like, does. You know what? Just for asking that, denied. You do not get. Yeah, I'm like, I don't think that's legal. Like they show a. a He's like, I've been in line for three hours. And she's like, denied. <laughs> like, that's that was the scene. Yeah. Like, how is that legal? It's his money. Like, that's what unemployment is. You've been paying into an account. It's very difficult for Christian white men in the American <laughs> South is yep. what we're learning that's here. That's what this movie wants us to know. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> oh, and then this, and then it takes a fucking left turn. Yes! <laughs> yeah, sure does. Podcast <laughs> listener. At this point, I knew this movie had broken Kara. <laughs> But it was this scene, this scene coming up that I knew would haunt Keith and right. I am furious. So many ahead. I know. Mm, okay. <laughs> this is so <sighs> fucking good. Later that day, take us there, Heath. Michael the lawyer takes his five thousand dollar retainer to a casino. I I don't know if we would it's say not casino. a casino. It's this a is like some place guy's table. It's a place where you can. There's yeah, somebody's really shitty table that has like a felt mat that it's got folds in it's it, wrinkly. but it's technically green and felt. Yes, it's a wrinkly felt and dining room chairs. They are and legit <laughs> ugly yeah. dining room chairs that they're sitting in. <laughs> yep. So he's at that establishment and he's going to bet that five thousand dollars on blackjack. He's going to do one single hand of blackjack. <laughs> yes, because this is how good gamblers gamble. Yeah, yep. he, you, you count all the cards and then you, right when it's the perfect time, you show up with $5,000. Hello. And bet on Today. one day. Yeah. So he plays one hand of blackjack. How's that and hand go, Heath? God damn take it. A, okay. Take us to the play by play. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Okay. So he gets dealt 14. And uh, the dealer is showing a seven. So you actually are just barely supposed to hit here. Mm -hmm. And he does. He hits and he gets a four. So now he's at 18. Okay. You clearly stop now. You have an 18 against most likely a 17 for the dealer. He hits again. <laughs> he hits again. And he hits a two. So now he has a 20. Yeah. He, he deserves to lose. I hope he loses all the money and gets beat up by the bookie. But he has a 20 I now. genuinely thought he was going to hit again. I, ge <laughs> I I was so sure at this point in the movie he was going to be like, hit me. And the dealer was going to be like, are you sure, man? The dealer's going to be like, I'll just, I like your money. This is, I <laughs> love when you come to this bedroom casino. <laughs> yep. So he, he makes 20. Obviously, the dealer flips over his cards. He's got a seven and a four. Hits again. Gets 10. He's got 21. So the dealer gets 21. He loses his $5,000. Mm -hmm. And from there, we get to see Coach Paul is also having a sad evening. He's playing slow motion night basketball by himself in an abandoned parking lot of basketball. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. And do you, did you guys notice, I don't know if you noticed this, but they kept showing the same aerial stock footage of like a pretty high tech looking town yeah. that was like an ultra HD, like 4K. Oh, when yeah. When all the other footage is absolute garbage. Like they overpaid for their stock footage because all it did is make their footage look really bad. Well, they saved so much money by going with the yearly plan, Kara. They had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> they also clearly, this was insisted upon by the actor who plays the coach. He dunks a basketball here in slow motion. And absolutely not. There's none scenario where this actor can dunk a basketball. No. This was on a tiny little hoop or maybe stock footage something like that yeah or he had like a springboard right them. <laughs> it, yeah. it pulls away we just see that the basket's been lowered all the way down like for children yeah. <laughs> cut away right so from there we cut over to coach paul and michael having a late night legal meeting and so what we established in this scene he's like oh man it's been so hard i'm glad we got that big settlement you told me about in the last scene he's like bad news uh turns out he actually snuck me he says they snuck him yeah oh that was so confusing to me what does that mean i have no idea yeah because the coach replies with so you're saying they outsmarted you and i just wrote my notes <laughs> calling a meeting and then not giving them a settlement is not outsmarting someone you snuck me what now i also have to point out one other thing about this scene the actor coach patchouli he goes through puberty during this scene <laughs> twice, twice during the scene. He does a lot. He's like, so you're saying that's really it. <laughs> and they kept it. They kept it. Well, yeah, because that's the only time they ever found emotion in his voice. That's true. Why does the lawyer, bowtie lawyer, keep calling him Swami? 
Oh, because he's a, he predicted the basketball games correctly. When he told them all his bets were wrong, it turns out the basketball coach was right about that. All his all his picks were wrong. He was correct. So he's a he's a swami. So that's like that's racist, right? Very racist. I'm pretty racist. sure, yeah, okay. yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like it's very incredibly racist. problematic. Okay, yeah. good. Just making sure. All right. About as close to a slur as you can get in these movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so this is the scene where something important is revealed. Oh fuck! Yes, it is. This is this is the unsealing that we referenced earlier in the in the description. Yes, he hands him an envelope and he's like, <laughs> "Did you think they weren't going to bring up this?" And the coach is like, "That's sealed. That's sealed. They're not allowed to unseal it." And he's like, "Their money unsealed it." Yeah. So now we know he has a juvenile record, and I wrote legit. Who cares? But later. We'll see why we care. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> podcast listener, podcast listener. I know I give you this challenge quite a bit in these more recent years. Go ahead and pause the podcast. Pull over to the side of the road if you need to. Write down the craziest fucking thing you can possibly imagine his juvenile record being. <laughs> because this movie's going to beat it by a country mile, my friends. <laughs> he also points out that like prayer is just clearly not work prayer is failing man he like points it out to the coach he's like dude it's actually the opposite of of working you're not working because of prayer you see <laughs> you see how it's all bad like nothing is working with that kind of enjoy that it's true yep. i like that too good points are made in this film accidentally <laughs> <laughs> but they land on okay we got to really dig. We have to play for keeps now, too. Maybe we should do a psych out thing. I don't know. But we're, we're taking this seriously now. <laughs> this is when Michael's like, you know what? I'm going to Google how to win court stuff right now. We're doing this. <laughs> this scene literally ends with his lawyer going, oh, I'm Googling it. If you <laughs> yeah. are ever talking. Hey, free legal advice from a podcast. If you're ever talking to a lawyer and they go, I'm going to Google it. You are fucked. <laughs> you're fucked. Do you know that? You're fucked. Yep, it's true. It's true. And that, everybody, is the classic screenwriting move called the Googling Cliffhanger before Act Three. So we're gonna take one more quick break and we'll be back for the adjective conclusion of Prayer Never Fails. Come on, I just said I don't feel like cooking. This is important, Kara. You need to see. Hey guys, what you doing? Oh, Kara has ordered takeout five nights in a row now, so she needs to be Ghost of Christmas Futured into HelloFresh. What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Okay, but what does that have to do with Heath? Oh, well, Heath doesn't have HelloFresh. Hey, uh, is that your dinner, buddy? It, yes. Why? A bag of Skittles at and a bag of Cheetos? And Cheetos, yes. It's Thursday, so. See? Ghost of Christmas future. I can hear you. I'm right here. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm-fresh produce that arrives within a week, so you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you the wait in long holiday lines, and ensuring you don't waste money on excess food. Look, Eli, that sounds great, but that's got to be super expensive, right? It's not Cheetos, by the way. They're store brand, just for the record. Actually, according to the Zagat Dining Survey, HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save, on average, over $65 a month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. Wow, that does sound good. Skittles are branded, though. These are the real Skittles. I was actually a customer of HelloFresh before they became a sponsor. I still get three family-sized meals a week. Everyone in my house loves HelloFresh, from our babysitter to my son. I looked up some generic ones online, but the, they're really only sold in bulk. So, uh, yeah, that was a no-go. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Wait, so if I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16, I get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts? That's right. I like Takis, too. So, what do you say? Are you scared straight? Yeah, let's go. I really wish you'd stop using me to ghost of Christmas future people. Oh, okay, they're gone. They left. <laughs> okay, be straight with me, Mr. Brown. How's my case going? Not good, son. As you can see, they have much taller paper than I do. Damn, is there anything we could do about that? Well, I've tried double spacing, but I won't get to Staples till tomorrow morning. Mm. But uh, it gets worse. 
gets worse. Mm, it does. I I met with opposing counsel today. Oh, what did he say? Well, he told me I had a spot on my shirt, and when I looked down, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but what he flicked my nose, kid. Damn it. Our case is screwed. Yes, that is very legally relevant. You think I don't know that? Look, we've got one last hope, but I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, what's that? This morning, I filed a motion with the judge for us to be rubber and for him to be glue. Oh, dear God, I hope this works. Indeed. Grown-ups wrote this movie about us. Yes, they did. And we're back. When we left off, Michael Brown ESQ went on Google and he was typing something like, Praying in school, lawsuit, how do I win? Oh, right. <laughs> and Coach Paul was totally on board with his lawyer doing that. He was very excited. And <laughs> now we get an actual montage of more Googling. Yeah. That's another montage in this movie. We get only. So we cut over to the courtroom. And when I say they couldn't afford extras for this scene, not only is there no fucking body at this trial, which we're supposed to believe made it onto CNN. They could not afford a full jury. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they do not have 12 people in the like jury. Five? Six, max. Now, I'm going to clarify something here because a lot of people watch along and they're going to be confused. In Michael Brown's opening statement, he says that he wasn't actually fired for praying with the student, which is what we saw. He was fired for threatening to report the principal who was misusing funds. Oh, yeah, but this has never been referenced before right that now. That did not happen in the it movie. It not been referenced or shown in the movie in any way, shape, or form. So we have two we have two paths on this journey. Either, this movie is gaslighting us about yes, itself yes. right now. Either Michael Brown is lying and the, move, the rest of the movie goes along with it, or they forgot that they cut that scene. Okay, so, so yeah, so he's like... Making up facts, or maybe we're supposed to just believe that the principal was doing something, yeah, seedy. And then didn't didn't he switch his o like gears mid opening argument? Literally, yes, mid opening argument. <laughs> he might as well pull out cue cards and tear them up that he wasn't even reading off. And he's just like, "I'm going rogue," and he decides that it's I am going to argue that prayer is good because. Earlier, it was suggested that if you argue that prayer is good in an American courtroom in Florida, you'll get laughed out of court because, mm. you know, juries hate Christianity. Right. Especially in Florida. Right. So so then he makes like he says, fuck it, I'm going with the pro prayer argument. Right. And and then the opposing counsel like makes a well-researched and legitimate <laughs> argument against <laughs> prayer. Yeah, right. That moment that comes up in every Christian movie where the actor has to sadly mumble out the truth. Yeah. It was actually in 1962, <laughs> the Supreme Court knew what Brett Kavanaugh doesn't, but, but don't worry, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll win. And it's like, do the writers real? This is the part I never understand. Like, do the writers hear themselves making so much sense? <laughs> no, they, okay. they do not. This movie is like, boo, Joe Pa could have made everyone Muslim if he wanted to, boo. And then, and then I love that. So the opposing, <laughs> The opposing counsel, who is like, you know, reasoned and, and legitimate and, and well-researched and all that, he just, I broke. I was watching and then I broke because he goes, no matter how many athletic events you may coach mm -hmm. to victory. <laughs> yeah, we do get to watch Corbin Benson sound that word out in real time. Yeah, <laughs> He says it like three okay, times. But th that's, that, that's classic lawyering. If you do it in like the charming southern -y accent, you win way more off. That's how you get a 20-year winning streak. <laughs> By saying athletic. You're saying stuff like <laughs> athletic. <laughs> Athletics <laughs> mozzarella. Come on, you're not <laughs> charmed by that? I'm charmed by that. Corbin Burnson. I also have to point out one other thing about this scene. As Corbin Burnson's doing his speech, for some godforsaken reason, the camera keeps cutting to a drunk, smiling Eric Roberts who's super fucking <laughs> excited to be on camera. And so it's just like, and another thing about the legal system, ah, how's it going? <laughs> How you guys doing? <laughs> I got the whole world in his hands. No, think because this is important. My my grandpa died, and I need this. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Just you know, has great feet. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a weird moment with Eric Roberts, but the whole point is that just Corbin Burton comes up and he just says like, "So the First Amendment says we win." That's pretty much it, right? 
and everybody's just nodding along, being like, "Yeah, I guess that it that is." We'll let this guy try stuff, but super duper First Amendment, yeah, which is now gone in real life. I get, I hate to bring it back to reality, but that's going to be that's there, there's it. no more. Stop bringing things back to the real wall life. of separation is Stop fucking it. almost gone. It's, it's pretty, pretty much done. People are trying soon. to commute. We're trying to vote for Hillary. Clinton. Trying to breathe. do dishes. Diaphragmatic breathing. Noah's going to cut all of this, <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad it. I hope he emails it to you, like a like a horse's head. Okay, whatever. So Corbin Burns <laughs> gives his very short speech that's just like, yeah, the law says we win, so <laughs> right, I'm done. Right, yeah. We've already done this before in court. And then then there's lightning for a second. <laughs> outside, <laughs> right yeah. after him explaining that, like, no, the law says the atheist thing is right. And then evil lawyer who is maybe atheist, but maybe not. But for Coach Paul, he gets to call his first witness. And it's the kid with the abusive dad, Lorenzo Lamas, from the beginning. Oh, yeah. I don't oh. know what happened in this scene. This is so fucking crazy. Here is all that I can assume that happened. This actor did not read the call sheet and was like, oh, you guys have me on Thursday. I can't be there on Thursday. And they were like, well, we already saw the scene where he calls you to the stand. And he was like, well, I can't be there on Thursday. I have to go to, you know, rehab or whatever. And so this scene, what happens is like, I call my first witness. Shit. He said no. <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah. weird. Oh, so right. They're claiming that the kid didn't get like properly subpoenaed or something. So the kid's dad, being a judge, knew the rules about that and refused to let the kid testify or something like that. I think. Yeah. And Corbin Bernson says, you know, rule 801 out loud, which means, you know, that that accounts. So what happened is nothing. And we're <laughs> to believe that this abusive dad and his kid drove all the way to court just so they could dramatically say no and leave, which they knew they were going to do. Yeah. Which also the lawyer goes, well, can't we just use his deposition instead? And they're like, no. And I'm like, you already deposed the kid? <laughs> Wait, you already, like, this case is so complicated that you already had a fully, like, legal conversation in front of a camera with a court reporter, which, by the way, do you guys notice that there are no court reporters or other, like, there oh, are no, there's no mean, staff. Kara, Kara, <laughs> they didn't get a full jury. The idea that these, that these filmmakers could rustle up a typewriter is... <laughs> No court reporter, no bailiff, no none of the things that are necessary. <laughs> One of the juries just running over to the, the steno thing and being like, no, no, I got this, I got this, I got this. I'm taking notes, don't worry What did about I just it. say? I said, I got this, I got this, I got this. What did I just say? I got this, I got this. <laughs> so now they just cut over to the next witness. Yep. Because Steve had tennis that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and the next witness is the principal. Yes. I love him so much. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, look, maybe you're watching this movie and you're listening to our podcast and you're thinking, oh, guys, you're being a little bit mean. Like, they maybe they tried their best and one of them's dead. Like, it's not like they're absolutely <laughs> <things> are true. <laughs> vicious transphobes <laughs> to assure us. Well, that they're worth mocking. You can go ahead and disabuse yourself of that right now. <laughs> You'd be wrong. <laughs> yep. So here's the line of thinking. And Heath, Kara, please interrupt me if I have this wrong. He's talking to the guy and he's like, uh, so you, you don't have anything in the rule about not praying. And he's like, well, it's about anything that goes against the norms. And Michael Brown, Esquire's counter argument is you have a transgender teacher and you didn't fire her for being trans. Yep. That's that was the whole scene. That's that's literally the argument. First, they do the dumb thing of like, where does it say exactly in the rules that you can't pray? I don't see the word praying anywhere. And the principal has to be like, no, we didn't write down praying. It's it's the rule for indecent conduct. And he's like, oh, do you, you consider prayer indecent? And he's like, well, it's not, I, it's not, I don't mean it like the way that that word is, you know, used in the English language. I mean, <laughs> not the norm. And then he's like, okay, well, you have, a transgender teacher, would you say that is the norm to be trans? And that's, yes, that is the argument. Like, you have to fire the trans person if you're going to fire the Christian person. That's uh -huh. what the movie's trying to say. Here. They're just so, wanted to, they needed Fuck. to just sneak in a little more bigotry. Yeah. Council moves for yucky, yucky trans person. Case dismissed. <laughs> that's it. Seriously. You got it. They might as well name another rule with a number. Do you have to do that, by the way? 
like if the lawyer doesn't name the number of the rule correctly, does their objection not count or whatever yeah. th motion they're trying to do not count? No, it's it's like Jeopardy, where if you don't answer in the form of a question, <laughs> you lose. You, you get lose convicted of, the, of yeah of murder. Yeah, they put you in handcuffs in the courtroom, <laughs> which actually happened. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> that is gonna happen. Oh my god, that, uh, that is gonna happen. Yeah. So that ridiculous, horribly bigoted scene happens, and then later that day. Michael and Coach are they're, they're just hanging out in the courthouse in the dark together yep. like late night. Oh right, because it's raining outside. And the bouncer has to be like, go home. I have to close. I'm apparently the bouncer for the courthouse. You have to leave now. <laughs> Look, there's nothing. You've been in a long day of trialing, right? And you loosen your tie and you just hang out in the courtroom with your <laughs> lawyer. Just kick back. Take your Crack shoes off. a couple off. of LaCroix. Yes. Damn. Just chill. But he's not even, he's not talking. He's not doing anything. He's just mouth breathing. Yep. <laughs> in like the worst way. And like there's this whole thing about how he's like, I had to, my um, mentor had to argue from up here in the balcony because this courtroom was segregated. And you're like, Jesus, that's sad. And also has nothing to do with this movie. Oh, but doesn't it, Kara? Doesn't that's it? That's the part I don't, because they revisit the other it. character. <laughs> so, yeah. Seriously, seriously, this black lawyer is like, yeah, so my mentor, who also black lawyer way back in the day, he had to argue from the balcony and not the regular part of the courtroom because he was black. And then the white basketball this, coach is like, just like me, yep. wouldn't you say? And <laughs> and they agree. This greasy looking white boy with his $5,000 motorcycle is like, yeah, that's exactly the same as me. Isn't it black actor who we gave the line yes to say after me? And the other actor, he's fucking, the pen is blueing it. He's like, <laughs> yes, it's just like S -s 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 segregation that you're not allowed to <laughs> I ran out of money from Amen in the 80s. I had to do this. I'm sorry, everybody. Oh, that is what that's happened. what it says in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but the point here is that, yes, American courts are hostile to Christianity, just like, uh, you know, just like America was hostile to black people. Same thing. Same thing. That's the, okay. I was like really trying to understand the connection. Oh, that's it. So was the actor who played Michael yeah. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't he say something like, like he was shackled? Yep. And they were like, yeah, shackled by stupidity. Shackled oh, by stupidity. Th that is far from the dumbest thing they'll do with shackles in this movie. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. True. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil I, it. That, that's as far as I will spoil it. It's do not right ruin up. my okay. orgasm. <laughs> I'm already on wikifeet.com. So now we cut to the next morning and the whole basketball team shows up to watch Coach Paul take the stand. This is his big day on the stand. We fight. We, we fight. fight. We fight. We fight. We fight. We fight. And they we do fight. that again. We fight. Yep. <laughs> they also, what, like the captain of the basketball team's like, all right, man, you got this. Defense wins championships. And I was like, well, he, he's a plaintiff, but uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing the best game. You're doing the best you can. Yeah, they keep referencing it like it's a criminal case, yeah, and it's not. Very it's a much. civil suit. Yeah. <laughs> right. exactly. They don't. They lost you at the beginning of that sentence. And after they do the We Fight, they walk into court with slow motion action hero music. <laughs> oh, the music. I, I wrote in my notes, the music seems to think they're about to pull out shotguns and kill the ninjas that took over the courtroom in Act 2. So and then stupid. I wrote... When you play epic emotional music through the entire movie, it definitely loses its effect. Yeah. Yeah. It just becomes noise. You know what also takes away from that effect is when you turn on that music and yeah, you expect like a shotgun ninja scene like you <laughs> described, but instead you get this guy. He looks like Dwight Schrute at this moment. Coach has the <laughs> short sleeve button down with yes! the tie that doesn't mm -hmm. reach his, his waist. <laughs> yes. He looks like he's in like a Catholic school uniform. Like yep. it's yeah, it's like the tie, the white short sleeve shirt that's oh, too big for him. It's so rough. And that again, this is what they believe to be a montage. The entire montage consists of walking from the door of the courtroom <laughs> over to the, the table. And mouth breathing. Lots of mouth breathing. Lots of mouth and breathing. A good <laughs> deal mm -hmm. of wake apnea. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, is this the point where the lawyer says something to us, the viewing public, about how our lives are hopeless because we have no face? Yeah. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds yeah. about right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's what you would say during, you know, you're taking the stand moment here. 
Yeah. Your, your, your lawyer would, would ask you about that and you would be able to say that. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. his first question for his client is, did you pray with Kurt Rogers? That's the kid. And he's like, yes, I did the thing. So at this point, it should just be like, Gavel, you're, you're still fired because you're not allowed to, to do that. Right. You just admitted to exactly what this yeah, case right. is about. It's so fucking clear cut. But he continues. He's like, why did you pray? And he says, because the kid told me about physical abuse. And my response was praying and not the mandatory reporting that I'm required to do by I think, Kara, you're saying like pretty much every state that's public schools, you have to do that? Yeah, like, yeah, a public school teacher for sure. Sure hope so. And he also said, and maybe not even public school, maybe just anybody who works with kids. I'm not sure what that, I know I have to as a therapist. I do a but, workshop at a high school once a year and uh, I'm a mandated reporter. Yeah, so exactly. It's, 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 all it's really point. intense. Yeah. But this is the actual line he said, quote, I did it because I recognized pain in his eyes and I knew it. That's acting. That's acting. That was what that was. <laughs> that's, that's writing and acting, my friends. <laughs> That's what they were going what for. What does that even mean? Kara really hammed it up compared to what we actually <laughs> yeah. got in the movie, though. I did it because... Oh, so he prayed with the kid because he recognized pain in his eyes, and I knew it. What did you know? He knew that pain. Well, oh. that's about to be revealed, isn't it, Kara? <laughs> oh, there, there actually was a point to that line that he just did not sell to well, me. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not going to go ahead and give them things like points. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this is where <laughs> this is where the coach says, it, it's pretty funny. He actually kind of admits that like this whole thing's stupid for a second. He's like, yeah, so lots of people say... Uh, you know, prayer is nothing, and I was really supposed to report it to like a real professional. But I don't know much. I'm just a simple Christian basketball coach. Praying is real magic. And then the lawyer's like, "I nailed it. Your witness, Corbin Burns." It's a fucking rest. <laughs> yeah. It's not what you're supposed to do. He's just like, "Ah, uh, the trial is over." <laughs> he did the thing that he got fired for. The end. Okay, so now it's time for Corbin Burnson to get him to admit. His deep, dark secret. And he might as well say homo says what? <laughs> <laughs> this is how Corbin Burnson gets him to unseal his own backstory. He's like, so you're saying prayer works? And he's like, yes. And he's like, did prayer work for you when you were 10? And he's like, yes. And he's like, objection, you're, objection. You're- <laughs> Hold on. Fuck. My, my client just got tricked into. I told just just now. I told you don't talk about when you're 10. no. No, your honor. He said yes when I said, did it work when you were 10? Therefore, I get to bring up that. And Kara kind of teased this at the beginning. (laughs) Kind of. The juvenile record that our hero has is that he shot and killed his dad (laughs) when he was 10. But not before also pushing him out a window or something. He like, he does like, he lists like seven different brutal things he did to his dad. Closing with shooting. I believe, yeah, he like karate kicked him and then threw him through a window and then he walked downstairs and then shot him more to kill him more. Yeah. Something like that. Which is fucking badass for a 10 year old. A totally badass, but also dun dun dun. Or did he? (laughs) (laughs) What's amazing about this movie is that it's very clear none of the writers have ever seen a 10 year old because the image of a 10 year old. Throwing a full grown man through a plate glass window <laughs> and then shooting him. It's it's like Chucky levels of humorous. Oh, yeah. This kid couldn't do that at 28. Yeah, absolutely not. No, there's no way. So a 10 year old version of him. Mm-mm. Right. And so so from there, Corbin Bernson is like, OK, so praying helped when when you shot and killed your father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and Coach Paul's like, yes, it did. And then he starts mumbling a part of the Bible, I guess, that helped him. Oh, yeah. He just starts praying on the stand like a like a like a not well person. Yeah. Compulsively. Nothing Compulsively, shows you that yeah. prayer works like being like, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're going to get the real story. Yes. Yes. This is the or did he? Yes. Right. But uh, first they have a commercial break inside the courtroom or <laughs> yes! something. They fade to black, then unfade to the same scene. Well, to, here's to, what's <laughs> fucking crazy. Here's what's crazy. They fade to black and then we see Judge Eric Roberts sitting down, which means there is cut footage somewhere in this universe of ours of Eric Roberts being like, I got shit. I got shit. Stop the movie. Movie stop. Cut. Cut, 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 cut. 
Yep. So they did. They just <laughs> cut. They just, 100% that's all they that's what happened. Yep. Without question. <laughs> so, Eric Roberts sits back down and they start their court thing again. And now, Michael Brown, ESQ, is calling Nona Paul to the stand. Dun, dun, dun. Nona Paul is... Mama. Aiden Paul's mom. And it, it's a surprise witness <laughs> that he's surprising his own client with. That's yes. a, a double surprise witness. The movie thought that's how surprise witnesses work. Yeah. It is an in case... They surprise my witness. I'll surprise my witness with the double <laughs> surprise witness. I'll surprise my own client with a surprise witness. Yeah. And so she's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And so she comes down the aisle to, you know, go to the front to testify. And I'm pretty sure they just mounted the camera to the wheel. Yep. And this is how they got their very artistic <laughs> shot of her coming down. Like the, the angle, the camera angles in this movie. To be fair, if she walks, her face will explode off of her body. <laughs> oh, the plastic surgery. It's very likely. It's like this woman heard me making fun of the woman earlier in the movie for her plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, I'll show you. You do my plastic surgery while I'm hanging out of the side of your car. It's fucking insane. She looks like someone dropped Caitlyn Jenner's Madame Tussauds doll on its face and left it there for a year. And then they stood it up and they were like, ah, shit, give it to a Christian movie. She looks like the cat lady. Have you guys seen the cat lady? Like if you Google like cat lady plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, she actually does look like Her name like is that. Jocelyn Wildenstein. It's a real <laughs> thing. Cat woman, cat lady, plastic surgery. Like Google her. Yeah. She looks like her. Yep. Like someone just threw a handful of loose Botox at her face over and over and over. Yes. Very violent. It's absolutely. So scary. Or like, have you ever seen that part of a sci-fi movie where the alien is trying to put its human mask back on and it doesn't have it on quite right yet? Oh, oh, <laughs> it's, it is that, that Instagram filter. Yeah. You know that everybody like, where it like makes your lips big and it makes your, puffy pulls your yes, eyes absolutely. back and she looks like that Instagram. She is the embodiment of that Instagram filter. Ooh, if she ran that filter, would she look like a person? Ooh, <laughs> I don't know. yeah. Do, does Instagram make reverse filters for this actress? <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, so she gets on the stand to tell the real story, which is that Aiden didn't shoot his father. She did. Now, she was a drug addict, and Aiden's dad and his friends used to do terrible things to her. And I wrote in my notes, they made her watch Supernatural. But one <laughs> night... Why one do you night, hate Supernatural so I much? I don't know. One night, so they were supposed <laughs> so to imply random. that they like did bad sex stuff to her, Okay. But then one night, uh, clarify, tell me if I'm wrong. One night they were like, I think we should fuck Aiden instead. I think that is what happened. That is what is implied here. Yes. So she murdered him. Yeah. So basically she's like, he was abusive. He beat me and raped me a lot. But she doesn't say any of that. She like no. alludes to it. And then he's like, and then? And she's like, yeah. Then he decided to turn on Aiden. And he goes, what did he do? You don't have to answer that. It's your <laughs> way. You remember that was so <laughs> weird. <laughs> and I'm like, no, she does. She's under oath. She needs to say what happened. And literally, he's like, you don't have to answer that. And the whole jury's like, I get it. I get what's implied. <laughs> that's, that's so yeah, strange. We got it, man. The Dove <laughs> channel will not like this. Moving on. Thank you. <laughs> really sympathize with the dad, though, looking between sweaty, mouth-breathing Aiden and Botox mom and just being like, I could probably just jerk <laughs> right but Carrie you mentioned this earlier this 10 year old takes the rap for this murder here but it's not a murder where anybody needs to get in trouble right nope. no it's self defense this is just it's like a clear self defense justified killing that means that there was a possible flashback in this movie where she shoots the husband and he was like mama I'll tell them I did it and she was like good thinking nice cool perfect yeah. nice yeah that's what I wrote <laughs> That'll really free up my afternoon. Yeah. Now I can go to Target. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do drugs more. <laughs> okay. So dad was abusive. 10 year old coach protected her. Dad raped or beat or whatever the coach. So mom killed him. And then somehow she let her 10 year old victim son take the rap. She's a good mom. Yeah. Real good mom. Yep. That's the, <laughs> that's, that's what that's happened. That's the twists. Okay. So. <laughs> but then there's an extra, the, the twist twists itself in the next scene. Oh yeah. There'll be a meta twist for sure. <laughs> okay. This next scene where he goes to visit her, is this a flash sideways? 
This is ju- this is just a flash and more irregular. We I don't know why we flashed. It's just a scene. I think it's just a scene. <laughs> this is out of the timeline of the movie, but now he's visiting her on her deathbed. I think this is Eric Roberts had to take another shit. And okay. They were just like, we'll, we'll do something else somewhere else. Yeah, it's weird. They're like they needed to bring in a yet another character, a doctor, to say to the kid, "So your mom's dying of cancer." And it's like, well, why didn't... They could have just had her say that. Yep. Why does any of this matter? Like, it's just an unnecessary scene. Why did he have to go see her doctor? Why is the scene... Exa- <laughs> it's like the movie... Have you ever brought made up a crazy lie and you introduce a crazy character and your crazy lie, so then you try and add details to them in a panic <laughs> so that they're relevant? It's like, And you're probably wondering why I know John Stamos. Well, it turns out he's actually cousins with... Uh-huh. He loves pepperoni pizza, by the way, John Stamos. <laughs> That's how Sorry. these scenes feel, like jammed in Pizza? at the end. Oh, every time. And then it's like, and it's 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 literally like they're they're thinking back to when they went to film school, aka that one like half day seminar, and they were like, <laughs> show it, say it, show it, say it, show it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, okay. They zoom in on a cancer, just a big tumor <laughs> for a second, just to show us. Yeah, we got it. Doesn't matter. None of this matters. They can't say the scenes weren't in the movie. If you put them in after. Yeah, except they never put the scene with the fucking principal misappropriating funds. No. (laughs) Also, this movie is called Prayer Never Fails. Don't put cancer in your movie about (laughs) Prayer Never Fails. You don't have to put cancer in your movie. (laughs) Now, to be fair, mom did never pray that the husband would stop having sex with her son and her. So that's on her. Yeah, that's on her. She forgot to say she forgot to pray. Yeah. Oh yeah. Does she die? I don't. Did they? Nothing. They don't wrap this up at all, do they? No, they don't wrap it up. We just see a scene where she's like, "I have cancer," and he's like, "All right, good to know." Yeah. All we know is that <laughs> Eli's house had exactly in all caps that blanket. Okay. This was very <laughs> upsetting for me. This was my child. The blanket that she's under for this cancer scene was my childhood quilt. So it's really? just, I'm just looking as she like leaves through my family photo albums and is like, and another thing about when your dad used to fuck me with a fire extinguisher. And I'm just like, ah, wish, can we scooch the blanket out of shot? <laughs> Jesus. Weird Very feel. upsetting. Yeah. yeah. Eli yeah. lives next to Ken Del Vecchio, just to be clear. And a, a giant <laughs> chemical fire. Are you okay, by the way? <laughs> Didn't that just happen yesterday? That Wait, is what? A full... Like down the road, they had to evacuate a town right next to you? It's happening right now. One, it's happening right now. You need to leave New Jersey. Two, that's like a full 10 minutes from my house. So don't sure. worry about it even a thing. No, it'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, 10 minutes. Yeah, that's No, not you, you got the booster. You're good from the chemical fire. <laughs> Jersey's not giving out chemical fire boosters yet. You got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wait until your uh till your landfill booster. Yeah, yeah. Do your own research about chemical fires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're good. And you're probably thinking at this point, "Hey, this movie seems to have gone off the rails a bit. Don't worry, the other plot lines are going to go off the rails as well because Michael is now going to get a call from his bookie who tells him he has till the end of the day to give him his money or he's going to kill his twin sister. So Michael, Michael Brown, (laughs) attorney at law, (laughs) attempts to physically escape the trial. Yes. Okay. (laughs) So to be clear, that's not an exaggeration. He's just like, hey, uh, Judge Eric Roberts, I need to uh, step out of this room, please. I have a really important... I actually need a recess till tomorrow. I need to leave for a very important personal thing. And instead of being like, I'm ill. Right. Like, I'm going to shit my pants. I just need to go. He's like, I have a personal thing. And he's like, I don't care about your personal thing. You can't just leave court. I'll hold you in contempt. But Okay. But I know contempt is a real thing, but... I'll arrest you if you leave this room is what's nope. said. And then it happens. Is that real? And then the cops, here's what happens. Let's, let's be clear about <laughs> The cops, they're my favorite. No, you can't have a recess. Stop it. And then cops stand in front of the door and you're like, okay, that's stupid. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. No, 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 no. <laughs> then Michael Brown <laughs> attempts to <laughs> bum rush through the police officer. He goes, he does the swim move and the spin move and the juke. and the, It's so funny. And they, 
<laughs> they tackle him. But I love the cops. I love that the, there's two cops and they take the wide leg stance and they put their their one hand forward with the palm. <laughs> yeah. Just this big straight like, mm, thou yeah. shalt not pass. You know? None shall pass. <laughs> yeah, they thought they were in a music video. Yes. <laughs> yep. So they tackle him and arrest him. And now we're back at the cold open. We've caught up with the beginning. Yeah, yeah. this is him with his head on the ground, getting cuffed. This is him getting cuffed. Saying she needs me. Right. And now we get why. And also there's a lot of jump cuts in this scene. <laughs> <Yeah>. A lot. <laughs> so then they, they have their conversation from the beginning again. And now it's time for Michael's closing argument. Oh, right. To be fair, they don't just reference it. They just replay all of yeah, that. Yeah, they just footage. do the scene that we already talked They do it exactly word for word, moment for moment again. Uh-huh. And now it's time for Michael's closing argument, which he will do in hand and leg cuff shackles. <laughs> like Literal Hannibal fucking shackles. Lecter. Yeah. He says he starts his closing argument with like, I stand here, my hands and feet literally shackled, my freedom is restricted. Like a slave in the American South, which is just like my white client right now <laughs> in this year of our Lord, 2022. It's the weirdest, like, wh- why would he be in shackles? <laughs> it's it's insane. Also, it's like, so he's like, I have to take care of something. My sister's about to get murdered. And they're like, no. So they arrest him. And instead of just going, him being like, okay, never mind. Sorry, I'll just go on with court. They're like, we're going to put you in jail for a bit. No, no, you have to do the rest of your thing in shackles. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but but don't forget that they go, doesn't he go to jail for a minute? Yeah. And and like the kid visits him. Mm -hmm. And this is an actual quote from Bowtie Lawyer. You don't know what it feels like to grow up a gambler. (laughs) Does anyone... (laughs) Is gambling a childhood pathology? I might this- have had that one. My mother was gamblish. Uh, my father, so now I'm technically half gamblish. <laughs> yeah, when I was seven, my gambling was out of control. Like, do children understand how to gamble? Flashback to him beads of sweat pooling on his face as he plays jacks on the playground. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. I can't thing. lose these marbles. You don't know what it feels like to grow up a gambler. Okay. <laughs> so he's like, I stand here shackled like a slave. They say there's a separation of church and state, but there would be no state without the church. What? I just, what? I just wrote my notes. It's what could that nonsense. possibly mean to them? It's just words. You can say, you can put all the words in different orders. Yeah. It's just so stupid. Yeah. And I wrote, can someone please explain the connection between slavery, segregation, and prayer in school to me? I feel like I just can't <laughs> see the point they are fairly poorly trying to make. Right. Well, you know how like slaves wanted to be free? Uh huh. And you know how this surf coach wants to pray with his other 45 year old? <laughs> There you go. In in like in like a freedom kind of setting. Exactly. Like a yeah. free prayer. Okay. I get I it. I said those next to each other. Yeah. They're the same. Ergo, I'm the writer of this movie. <laughs> oh my God. I wanted them to just pan over to Eric Roberts and him being like, okay, <laughs> this is this but we didn't shackle him. He's that's a really smart prop for this. He speech. brought the prop. <laughs> He's just like, really. That's on him. Really adding a lot of emotion to this whole thing. We didn't do that. That would be insane. But it gets better. It does get better <laughs> worse. Yes, it does. From here. We cut ahead to the jury coming back in after deliberating. They've reached a verdict. Coach Paul wins. He won the case. They gave him $700,000 as a reward Mm -hmm. and his job back and the attorney's fees of $250,000. Yep. Okay. So that's almost a million dollars. Almost a million dollars in the reward here. Yes. And also, (laughs) this is an important thing to remember. Add this up in your mind. A million dollars mm-hmm. is what the jury has awarded this plaintiff. Yes, this is very important. Keep this in mind. Yes. Because it's going to pay off in an in the <laughs> craziest way. I would say, I mean, he's he did murder his dad when he was 10. So I don't know if it's the craziest payoff in the movie, but it's top <laughs> five crazy payoffs in this next scene. Yeah. By the way, the, the the foreman of the jury also announces, I'd like to, so yes, a uh, million dollars in reward, but more importantly, 
Praying in schools should be mandatory. I would like that to be read into the record, please. We, the jury, would also like to say neener, neener to the school district. <laughs> I, I literally wrote, this is such a boring Christian fantasy. We'd also like to add Ron DeSantis 2024. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like, exactly. okay, sure. Okay, so now they're back at the jail cell because he is still in contempt, even though he won. Yeah, even though he went to court and did what he... Okay, and also, by the way, no question like what happened to his sister oh uh don't worry about it don't worry, don't worry. It's no fine. sweat no he's back in they might as well wheel him back into jail like Hannibal Lecter with a mask on it's so ridiculous they're wheeling him next to the mom I get it no I get it also wait can you guys explain this to me we open up on the scene where they're in jail but why are they both in jail you can't go visit your friends in jail and just like hang get out yourself also <laughs> in jail out. with just them. having a LaCroix we, we're not allowed on the balcony we're doing it in this jail cell <laughs> but like earlier when he's talking to him he's on the other side of the door but this time he's just in jail with him yep why can you just turn yourself in for a little bit <laughs> and be oh, like yeah. uh, what I'll do a crime real quick what do you want me to do uh, <laughs> uh, I pray in school one more time okay cool <laughs> Cool, now I can hang out with my buddy. So Corbin Benson walks in, right? And he's like, oh, you beat me. And he does this weird monologue about like, the first man that beat me, his name was Thomas G. Blah, 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 blah. And now I'm going to think of your name, Michael Brown. It's stupid. It's stupid. Nobody cares. But this is the part that's best. He's like, I know the judge just awarded me, you awarded you a million dollars, but I have this check for you for $300,000. Do you take this? Deal or no deal. <laughs> and the lawyer is like, yes. <laughs> but he doesn't. It's the weirdest thing because he doesn't even contextualize it. He just comes in and goes, I, I talked to the judge and I got permission. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to offer you 300 and you 200. Do you want it? Do you take it? And they're like, yes. And it's like, no, that's not a deal. What? They Why? already got awarded a million. Why did they take half? <laughs> I don't I know. Think, I thought they were claiming that like they could appeal this and end up getting nothing. So this is like guaranteed something. Oh, come on. You think that's what is that? Did we miss that? Oh, the the, the movie does not clearly present that to us. No, in no way is that what like it's told to us correctly in a very clear way by the movie. But maybe that's what they're implying. Maybe. So they're like, yes, we'll take the money. And then they get down on their knees. Mm hmm. And, and they, they pray. pray in like the most. Why is it that like really passionate praying in these? It's so uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. It's like weirdly sexual. There's something going on. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys get like a vibe? Oh, yeah. Very yeah. sexual. No, yeah. I got okay. I got a okay. real wiki feed vibe off. Of yeah. This yeah. Scene. It's, it's just like jail and prayer and money. And <laughs> and this lawyer, this opposing lawyer, like. He is a good negotiator, man. Yeah. All he has to do is say, take this money. And they, and yes, we'll take that money. Well, what about half though? And they're like, sure, <laughs> absolutely. What about this mystery shoebox? Mystery shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> they dive on it. Yeah. <laughs> coupon book, coupon book. <laughs> and then, then the credits roll and you're like, oh, a bunch of that stuff didn't get resolved. The movie realizes it at the same time. So throughout the credits, they resolve things like we see him giving some guy a bag of money and his sister being alive. We see <laughs> Judge Dad getting arrested again, like the project was due and it's 830 a.m. And they're just like, quick, shove it into the credits, shove it into the fucking yeah. credits. 90 <laughs> percent of the plot unfolds in this like 30 second montage at the end, which there are whole characters. Like you said, the other judge, the dad, the like abusive father judge, which why was he a judge? What in purpose did that serve to the plot? None. 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 So, and it's like now he's getting arrested, but I it, but it's like raining too. They're standing in the rain and you're like, I don't even what am I looking at? Oh, you know what purpose it was serving? It was it was showing us how many abusive dad atheist judges there are packed into the American system right now. <laughs> oh right. yeah. And that's a problem. I'm serious. I think that's why they did that. Oh, and then at the very end, it literally has a screen that flashes up that says dedicated to Nick Lashaway. And so you, you know, like you do, you Google Nick Lashaway and you realize that's the main character of the movie. He died. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he died while they were, you know, finishing the edit. And this was his last project. And look, Nick did not have like a great career, right? He was like a background extra in 40 year old virgin. 
Yeah, he, I mean, did he, had, a couple he had a couple of parts. National Lampoon movies you've never heard of, but this was a, Nick definitely turned to his girlfriend and was like, "Don't worry, babe. Like it's just one movie. It's not like it's going to be the last movie I'll ever do." Yeah, and it was his probably his biggest role, mm-hmm. like by far. I mean, he had so much mouth breathing in this movie. Oh. Like, he was the lead <laughs> mouth breather, under five oxygen level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Before we close it out, any idea on the moral of the story? Prayer never fails. Doesn't it, though? (laughs) We're going to go with prayer never fails. That's the title. Prayer never fails. And if something bad happened to you, it's because you forgot to pray. You forgot to pray away your cancer and your horrible childhood trauma and abuse and all that. Right. So just pray and then all of your gambling debt will be resolved. (laughs) Sure. Pray for better cards at Blackjack, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for Prayer Never Fails Asterisk. <laughs> but we did find another god awful movie for next week. So, Eli, what's on deck? Well, he, we need to show our commitment to this job by going to a full movie theater during the pandemic. <laughs> Yikes. Full, though? <laughs> 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 we'll be watching American Underdog. It's the story of the uh, who? Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner. Yeah, it's a football guy. Yeah, he's, he's a, got a movie. He's a football guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode three hundred thirty-five to a merciful close. As always, big thanks to Kara for joining us. Kara, anything you want to announce? Anything you got coming up? Oh yeah, I always am supposed to do this at the end. No, just, you know, still still churning out those Talk Nerdy episodes every week. So you could go to my website. It's a great show, by the way. Check if you're Talk listening, Nerdy. yeah, give it Absolutely. a shit. I love it. I've been doing it since 2014 now. Pretty nuts. You still haven't uh, been guests on that show. When are you going to have us on that show? You know, <laughs> do you want to work it. out a date right here on the air right now? <laughs> We're going to leave such a big awkward pause here, Morgan. Really, Morgan, really, really like a big silence right here. <laughs> so mostly my mostly my guests on Talk Nerdy are not people who don't know the difference between fraternal twins and oh, identical twins. That was all you. <laughs> There's a lie. Okay, so I'll, I'll come up. up. You know what, Kara? I'll reach out to you and we'll, we don't have to let Eth hang in <laughs> okay. on our Talk Nerdy. We can... Uh, we can talk science. We do. Eli, <laughs> will you describe the science of the uh, the DNA that we were talking about earlier? You know, well, I, don't, I don't want to repeat Again? it because my co- my colleague, my friend and colleague, Karen just really Maria, quick, like TLDR. What, what, what did we say earlier? I'd hate to you know step on toes, <laughs> <laughs> especially because they're such nice ones, according to Wikipedia. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so so yes, visit my website, my name, KarenSanMaria.com, or my Patreon. Pledge you know your support of the show and listen to it because I don't know. I think it's good. There you go. Learn nerd stuff. Nerd stuff's the best. Yeah. And of course, big thanks to all our Patreon donors for all the generosity. There's a bunch of nerds in that audience. You will like that show. If you'd like to help support this show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for the podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Kara Santa Maria and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Breakfast Club clothes. And Prayer failed. The uh, the literal star of the movie died before it was released. It's super fucking sad and also completely undermines the entire plot as best it's as funny though. You yeah, gotta admit. As best as I could understand the plot. I have no idea <laughs> what's going on in this movie. Yep. Also, God went on to keep creating abusive dads because he likes to be needed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We fight. We fight. We fight. <laughs> we fight. Amen. 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 What's up? The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and the Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2022, all rights reserved.